Greetings, children of the screen. Your friendly neighborhood nerd scum here once again, coming at you with a video where I'm going to take just a few minutes to discuss Netflix Daredevil Season 3. So, final warning, even though it says so in the little title card, there are going to be spoilers. So it's your final moment to dip out now. I used to listen to people asking for help. That's what I was trying to do, was help people. But I was fooling myself. Darkness only responds to darkness. And the truth is, I'd rather die as the devil than live as Matt Murdock. Who are you? I'm Daredevil. Okay, so season three of Daredevil. Man, I was so excited for this season. Like, as they've been putting out, like, season two of all the other shows that, frankly, I just don't care as much about, it was really becoming frustrating, but it's finally here, and I tried really hard not to look at, like, anyone else's responses or, like, you know, taint my initial viewing of it. Uh, but I couldn't help but see on Facebook and on Instagram and stuff like that, a lot of people saying that, like, well, after this season, I'm just giving up on all the Netflix shows, which, by the way... You don't really have to, since most of them are getting cancelled, the Netflix Marvel shows, that is. But yeah, that definitely didn't happen for me on this show. Now, I will state that I really enjoyed this season. However, for all the people who hated it, or all the people who decided that they were no longer going to be watching the show after this season, I also kind of get that. Um... So first off, I want to talk about some things that I really enjoyed in the show, some things I really liked, and then we'll get into the core problems with this season, uh, which really there's only a couple of, but they're kind of big ones. I have to say that the writing uh, overall for this season was pretty solid. Like, again, Daredevil's typically a pretty well-written show, even when I don't necessarily like what they're doing. The way they're doing it typically tends to work for me in some way on some level. Um, and this season's no different. There were a lot of things that I didn't really care for what they were doing, but the way that they did it was very well done. Specifically, a lot of the character development. Um, like, obviously Matt, like, Matt Murdock in the comics is the kind of character who is constantly on, like, the verge of completely losing it. And once again, this season does a great job of illustrating, like, Daredevil having yet another crisis of faith or of identity or what have you. And just it feeling different than the way that it's felt in previous seasons, and definitely maintaining like the sense of spirit of the character of Daredevil from the comics. Uh, likewise, I really like what they did with Foggy this season, like his like guilt and dread over Matt dying after him having brought him the suit in the previous season. Like that really really works. And then his reaction to Matt being alive, and like his reaction to Fisk being released from prison, like all those things really build on what they had already established in some really wonderful ways. Uh, uh, the same thing's true for Kingpin, like, the stuff they're doing with his character doesn't really develop it a whole, whole lot, but it definitely moves him a little bit closer to the Kingpin that we, like, know and love from the comics. Um, there's a, very much a lot of, like, kind of strategic stuff going on with Kingpin, and it works out really, really well. Um, a lot of the beats that they use for that character are the same stuff that they've used before, but with just slight tweaks to make him more evocative of the more iconic Kingpin character. And finally... Bullseye. The way that the character of Bullseye is written and developed is very, very good. Like, it creates an interesting, like, semi-well-fleshed-out character with plenty of room to grow that, like, leaves you with a sense of dread and a sense of tension. Again, this character will come back up in the latter half of this video, but we're not there quite yet. Um, so yeah, the writing in terms of characterization was absolutely wonderful. The plot was a little bit meandering uh, this season, and it was very streamlined in terms of what the plot was. So in some respects, the plot felt a, like it felt a little underwhelming, but at the same time, that clearly wasn't the focus of the season. The acting in the season is also really solid, like all the returning cast, like they just go above and beyond, like they're really solid and nobody is phoning it in. Likewise, there are some really good, like, new additions. Once again, Bullseye, played by, I believe the actor's name is, like, uh, Wilson Bethel. Like, he does a great job of, like, pulling you into this horrible, despicable character who's just twisted and all screwed up in all the best kind of ways. Um, he's just absolutely fantastic in his role. 
Right on, guys. So those were the things that I really enjoyed about the season. And again, if you notice, there's nothing that's really like a standout, like that was so amazing. It's more just solid. And that's kind of how I felt about the season in general is like, despite having some very clear problems, it was still actually a pretty enjoyable, pretty solid season. So now let's go ahead and jump into the things that didn't work for me. And I will move from the things that, yeah, they bother me a little bit, but I don't think that they're that big a problem up to the biggest issue I have. All right, so three major things that I didn't really care for or that bothered me. We'll start with number three. Number three, the Karen Page backstory dump. So as I said, Karen Page is a character who has clearly had a lot of off-screen development before we ever met her, and it's things that people have been asking questions about, and in this season they give that to us mostly in one episode, where half or maybe over half the episode is reserved for a flashback scenario where we learn all these things about Karen, and then, like, the tail end of it takes place in, like, present day. Which, again, like, all the stuff that they tell us, like, that is really interesting, it works for a character, it's all performed and written very well, except for the fact that it really feels like this is stuff that maybe was intended to be spread out through a few episodes, and then, like, for some reason, they just dumped it all into this one. It also doesn't help that it's, like, towards the tail end of the season, where it feels like things should really be ramping up, and instead, like, it just slows everything down. Again, the information we're given is good, but the way in which we're given it does not work, and in fact slows down and hurts the overall momentum of the show. So there definitely was a better way they could have done that. Um... And at the same time, there's a lot of people who haven't been liking Karen Page, and I feel that this way that they've done it definitely doesn't help sway those people in her favor. So, yeah, the Karen Page, like, backstory dump was done very poorly, even though it was full of interesting things that were, in of themselves, handled relatively well. Number two, fight choreography. Now, again, guys, there were some cool fights in this season. However, there was nothing that gave me just, like, the awe of, like, season one, the hallway fight. If you've been watching the show, you know what I'm talking about. Like, that fight is so crazy good, and it's visceral and kinetic, and just, like, you can feel every blow in the fight, and, like, it looks like Daredevil is barely hanging on for his life, and that fight is just so amazing and feels so purely Daredevil that, like... It's just perfect, essentially. And this season, while it had some really solid fights and some, like, cool fights, we never really got anything that where, like, you remember. Like, as I'm sitting here now thinking, there's no fight that really stands out to me. And in a season where you introduce a character like Bullseye, and at some point in the season you have a fight between Bullseye, Daredevil, and Kingpin, like, there should be a lot more memorable moments. And specifically, like, in that last fight I was talking about, there's even some shots where you can clearly see, like, movie punches. Like, punches that were never going to connect, but the actors play like they did connect. And that is actually a problem in uh, previous seasons, but normally, like, the movement of the fight and the editing would hide it pretty well, like, to the point where, like, it took me a couple of viewings to notice it, whereas in this one, I was noticing it on the very first viewing, and it made it really hard to, like, emotionally invest in some of the fights. Uh, beyond that, like, again, you're using a character like Bullseye this season, so that should give you the opportunity to do some, like, crazy awesome stuff that this show hasn't had a chance to do. However, as I start addressing that, that's going to go ahead and bring me into the number one issue. So, the number one thing that I have issue with in this show is their interpretation of Bullseye. And I say it like that because that is the problem. Is it their interpretation of Bullseye? So I want to reiterate that the way that they handled Bullseye... Let's say that the way they handled their new villainous character, uh, you know, it's very well written. Like, the way that it's constructed is very, very well done. The development of that character and, like, how they peel back the layers of his psyche and, like, lead him into psychosis, all those things are very well done. The actor, as I said before, uh, Bethal or, uh, you know, whatever his name is, Wilson Bethal, I believe his name is, he does a great job of portraying this sociopathic, psychotic son of a bitch. Like, 
it's very engaging to watch and like you don't like the character on any level but like it's very engaging to watch and you're interested and like tense about what he's going to do next um all those things are done very very well the problem is he's not bullseye and like I don't mean to like be like like I'm not one of those comic book nerds who's like you know what you need to do just take the comic book and like translate the pages directly to the screen like I come from a background in filmmaking I know it doesn't work that way and I also know that like even the way characters are narratively built in comic books doesn't always work in a movie or in a TV show so I get that you would have to do things differently with Bullseye true however like Bullseye almost in a very like Joker like sense doesn't necessarily have one iconic backstory, one iconic origin story outside of the whole element of him being like a baseball player and like killing a guy with a baseball, I believe was supposed to be his first kill, which we do actually see in the show. Good on you guys for incorporating that. I'm going to give it to you when you do it right. Like that was cool. And even the way that they did it, like where it's Fisk seeing it in his apartment, like I'm pretty sure it was done for budget, but like the artistically like a uh, interpretive way that they do it actually really, really works. But other than like that, they give Bullseye this whole backstory that is interesting and intricate, but it's so not Bullseye. Uh, he's like an FBI agent, and it's like, no, Bullseye is supposed to be like a hitman who is the best hitman because he never misses. I mean, they don't even play on the idea that their version of the character Dex is like, a sharpshooter or that he never misses or that he's really good at throwing and shooting like we see some of those things in action but there's no emphasis on it it's not like in the FBI his nickname was bullseye because he used to be a sniper or like there was this one you know operation that they did where like you know he did something cool and got the nickname bullseye no like there's no reference to him being bullseye or have people like having a knowledge of him being exceedingly talented all we see is like him save Fisk and through that like Oh, yeah, well, he can shoot a gun really good, you know? Um, and then throughout most of the season, they don't even utilize that idea of, like, Bullseye being able to hit dead center every time. They don't even really utilize that in any significant way. We see him throwing a lot of shit around, but, like, after a while, it just gets really tedious because it's not played with, like, a sense of cool or a sense of awe. It's played with the sense of a guy throwing shit at you in a street fight. So about the twelfth time it happens... It gets a little tiresome, and then when you start seeing things like him throwing pins through, like, cubicles, or through walls, or stuff like that, like, the show wants to do a very, like, I get it, I get it, what you're doing. You want to do a grounded, serious, dark take of the character to fit into the world that you've created. Cool, except that shit doesn't fit into the world you've created, especially with the version of the character you've created. You want to do all these things from the comics with his ability that are, like, kind of fun... But, like, you don't want to put any emphasis on that because it's too silly for your show. Which is also a problem with the way that Bullseye's depicted himself. Like, Bullseye in the comics loves killing people. He has fun killing people. Like, and this character is so tortured, you never get a sense of fun with him. And again, I get what your show's going for, but having a psychotic dude having fun killing people would be creepy. And you could do it dark and gritty and still have him... Have fun with it. Bullseye. Okay, not that much fun, but some fun with it, you know? Don't have him be so tortured the whole time. Beyond that, just the utilization of him as Bullseye falls really, really short. Like, I do like the idea of them, like, using the Anacenti concept of, like, Daredevil's gone and Bullseye, like, becomes Daredevil, but, like, the show doesn't actually even play with that in a really interesting way. It's just a very simple, like, Kingpin has him dress up like Daredevil to frame Daredevil. Like, there's never a point where he starts believing he's Daredevil or, he like, he starts going out doing a warped version of what Daredevil does, like, trying to save who he thinks are innocent but killing them on accident. Like, nothing interesting is ever done with that concept. So instead, what it's done with it is basically giving us yet another dark reflection of Daredevil, just like they did with Frank Castle in the previous season, except less because this guy while he was an FBI agent like he's not a vigilante like the, it doesn't work so there's really nothing of value done with that and at the end of the day the worst part of it is when we heard Bullseye was in season three of Daredevil we were under the impression we were going to get Bullseye fighting Daredevil not Daredevil 
fighting a mock-up daredevil who throws shit at you and doesn't always hit dead center. Like, that's not what we signed on for. That's not what anyone wanted from Bullseye. So, that's a problem. And the final and most insulting issue related to Bullseye in the show is the tag at the end of the season. Like, again, they've never set up anything in the season about him being, like, the best shot. They never reference Bullseye or anything like that. There's never any indication. Like, if you're someone who does not know the comics, you would never guess that this character has any would ever become a guy named Bullseye. There's nothing in it. Like, if you're a comic book fan, you know it, even though they've changed the character so much that he's unrecognizable because you know the intent. But, like, someone else going in, no idea. And then at the end of the season, while he's in surgery, he opens his eyes and they flash little bullseyes on his eyes. What the hell is that? Is he going to have that when he comes back? Like, obviously, they're indicating, oh, now when he comes back, he's going to be bullseye. And, you know, like, I want to give them credit. I'm going to watch the next season if they get another one. Because just like with Punisher, I didn't necessarily care for him the way they did him on Daredevil. But when they put him in his own show, it, well, I kind of liked it a little bit better. So I'm not saying give Bullseye his own show, but maybe when they bring him back, like, he'll be a little closer to what I want from Bullseye. But still, it's a bullshit fan service moment where like oh no like we didn't do anything even remotely related to bullseye so let's put some shitty cgi bullseyes on his eyes uh to indicate oh he's bullseye now but like there's no setup for that like you have never focused on any of the elements that would build an identity of bullseye like he has no identity of bullseye like w there's nothing there for that and I mean, like, if you did want to do something like that, it actually could have been really, really simple. Like, in the last fight with Kingpin and Daredevil, like, get the mask ripped off of him at some point, and then have Daredevil end up hitting him with one of his little things, like, with one of his uh, billy clubs, right here! And, like, fracture his skull and do some shit so that he always has, like, a little dot circle scar there, and then, like, when you bring him back, have Home Dude do, like, the signature cut or whatever, you know? Like, there are ways you could have built it into the exact character that they did. They they could have brought all those elements together if they just added a little bit more of actual bullseye into it. It could have really, really worked, but it doesn't. It falls short in terms of being bullseye but in terms of being like an interesting and cool villain for the season that like we dread and fear and like gives daredevil a good fight very well executed but calling him bullseye definitely distracts from the quality of work that was put into it you should have just done him as his own character if you weren't ready to commit to the bit of doing bullseye then you shouldn't have done bullseye you know what it is though the little thing with like the little I, this is what i equate it to it is the end of the dark knight rises where they tell us that joseph gordon levitt's character's name is robin like they did nothing to set it up they don't really give a shit how it relates like it's just like oh here fan service like, oh yeah, he's Robin. We did Robin. See, aren't you happy? And same thing here, where like, it almost feels like they never intended this character to be Bullseye when they were concocting the season, and then after the fact, like, slapped Bullseye's, like, little hints of Bullseye, like, the way he throws stuff on top of it. Like, that's what this Bullseye feels like. So, for people who are like, I'm done, like, uh, they ruined my favorite Daredevil villain, I'll never watch this show again, it's like, I think that's a bit of a harsh reaction, but I get where the impulse or the sentiment comes from because this bullseye really didn't work for me. So yeah, I'm not going to go on any longer about it. I could probably rant about it for a bit longer, but the truth is like it was a really solid character that they created, but it's not bullseye. So right on guys, as I said before, I did enjoy the season. It clearly had some problems, but overall, I found it pretty entertaining and enjoyed it. But what did you guys think? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you like this video, guys, please leave a like and share it with some friends. Also, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe and hit that little bell so you can make sure you get updates on all the dope content I'll have coming out in the future. Furthermore, guys, if you'd like to follow me on Instagram or Twitter, I will have the link for that in the description below. Thank you very much for your time, guys. Hope you all have a good one. Nerd Scum, out.